So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about fibroids. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. K and I'm a GP based in North London. My videos cover a wide variety of health topics, but health topics with a particular focus towards people of colour, covering and dispelling a lot of the myths, the misinformation and the absolute weird and scary stuff that's out there so that it makes it easier and simpler to understand what affects our health. So if these videos seem like they'll be of interest to you, then please, please keep watching. Feel free to subscribe and share my videos with other people that you would think would find this interesting. So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about fibroids. I'm going to be breaking it down. I'm going to be separating a lot of the fact from the fiction and telling you all you need to know about these pesky little things. So without much ado, I'm just going to move right on to the topic. So let's start from the beginning. What actually is a fibroid? Well, a fibroid is a growth that can happen and grow anywhere in your womb. Almost like a, the way I would see it is like a seed. And this seed can grow actually in the walls and the lining or it can grow on the outside surface or on the inside surface and they can get bigger they can change in size you know some can be quite small about the size of a pea and some can actually be very large around the size of a watermelon however the one thing that they are not is cancer so that's something to be relieved about fibroids are like buses and they often grow together in groups so when one's picked up during a scan or an investigation, it's more likely than not that there are other ones present as well. Fibroids are incredibly common with at least 50%, yes, 50% of women likely to develop fibroids at some point. However, though, not all of these women will get symptoms. So most of them may not even know that they have fibroids and they carry on with their normal life as usual. There are some things that do further increase the risk of getting fibroids. Number one is if another family member has had fibroids. So you're two and a half times more likely to get fibroids if your mother or your sister or another close family member has had fibroids. Number two is your age. The typical age range for people to start getting diagnosed with fibroids is in their 30s and 40s, especially if they've never had children before or they started their periods at an early age. All these things increase your exposure to estrogen, which is one of the key hormones that influences fibroids and causes them to grow. Number three is your weight. So if you are overweight, then that can also increase your risk of developing fibroids. And the reason for this is because um, estrogen, you know, women that are overweight or obese have higher levels of estrogen. Again, that key hormone that affects fibroids and causes them to grow and multiply. The last factor, which is probably the most relevant for us, is being black. Being a black woman, a woman of colour, increases your risk of getting fibroids substantially. You're three, and three times more likely than a woman of a different race to get them. Let's go back to the numbers. Initially, I said 50% of women. So that's one in two women get fibroids. And then when you add on top of that, being black, it's no wonder really why fibroids is very common in black people. And here's more bad news. Not only are fibroids more common in black women, but also it tends to happen and we tend to be diagnosed at a younger age. We tend to have more multiple fibroids and also they tend to cause more symptoms in us than women of other races. Interesting side note, fibroids and keloid scarring, both of which are common in black people, share similar genetic characteristics. Now, I also get asked about the contraceptive pill and whether or not being on the contraceptive pill increases your risk of fibroids or causes them to grow. 
Admittedly, it's not an area where there's a lot of science and a lot of research has been done. But what we are finding out and what evidence that there is doesn't show a link between the contraceptive pill and developing fibroids. So for those of you who are taking the contraceptive pill with no problems, I wouldn't, as a result of this, be alarmed and go and change it or stop it. But it might be something that you wish to discuss with your own doctor or healthcare provider. So then that leads us to ask the question, where do they come from in the first place? Again, this is still something that modern science is trying to figure out. But it's likely that there's more than one thing that causes fibroids or affects them in the first place. Um, the main thing that we do know is that fibroids do respond and they do seem to be under the control of two key hormones. One is estrogen and the other one is progesterone. And these, depending on which phase of life you are during pregnancy, menopause, medication, can affect whether or not fibroids grow or shrink. It's not always the case that you would automatically know when you have fibroids. Because for a lot of women, they don't have any symptoms, it doesn't affect them in any way, and they can carry on with their life. And that's perfectly okay. Sometimes it just happens to be randomly picked up during a scan that you have for other reasons. However, if you do fall into the group of women with symptoms, these can be anything from heavy or painful periods. It can also affect your stomach and your bowels, making you feel bloated, sluggish and constipated. Your bladder can also be affected, giving you that urge that you need to constantly be going to the toilet to pass urine. Sexual activity can also be painful or uncomfortable, depending exactly on where the fibroid sits. I must state that the vast majority of women with fibroids do not have any problems conceiving or carrying a pregnancy. However, in some rare cases, it can increase the risk of fertility issues or miscarriages. So that's it for part one. If you want to keep watching for part two, in which I talk about what treatment options are available and any further things to bear in mind with fibroids, then stay tuned.